NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. By AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. And by DirecTV, if you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Enter now for a chance to win the Camaro Synergy on a Talladega Race Weekend package and meet Tony Stewart. Visit WinCamaroSynergy.com now to place your entry. Brad Keselowski now four tenths of a second up on Matt Kenseth. Kenseth closing as Keselowski battles Ryan Newman. Well, guess what? He ain't going to get by Ryan Newman just real easy. Ryan will race him hard, buddy. Ryan and 39 car trying his best to stay on the lead lap. Now while we were away Denny Hamlin had to make a pit stop Matt. Mike he could not wait any longer Hamlin hit pit road for the loose wheel. It was the right front not right rear and obviously looking at how difficult it is to make up ground here frustration has set in in the cockpit of the 11. Hamlin now 25th, two laps down. I feel his pain, man. I mean, yep. you got to do your job. Everybody's got to do their job. Or on this track particularly, you're going to lose so much time. You're going to fall so far behind, and you can't make it up. You know, one of the fastest drivers on the track right now, Jeff Burton in that 31 car. He just drove by Jeff Gordon in the 24 and took that third position away. He's actually about a tenth quicker, talking about Jeff Burton, than Brad Keselowski, our leader in the two. His team, Richard Childress Racing, won the Saturday race here. Yeah, Gordon's car before that pit stop there was really, really good. Uh, maybe it's a car that's going to be good on the long run and not so happy on fresh tires. But before that pit stop, he was really the best car on the track. Darrell, I talked it at our mid-race report. I think this track continues to change, and now we don't have any sun. It's back cloudy again. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson in eighth place. He's eight and a half seconds off the lead. Trying to move up to Brian Vickers. But Vickers a full straightaway in front of him. And how about Clint Boyer up in the top five? About 3.3 seconds back. Steve? Listening to Dale Earnhardt Jr., he told Steve Letard the adjustment he made on the last stop. The 39 and a two right here. They, Ryan Newman has been really making me nervous. Ed, Ed, Kazowski's had that outside run on him a couple of times, and Ryan would pull right up in front of him, kind of like he did uh, Matt Kenseth in 17 right there. But Kazowski used good patience, worked his way by, and he's all clear. And I promise you, that little cat in that yellow 22 car, he's not going to go down easy trying to stay on the lead lap, A.J. Allmendinger. Well, it took fully half the race to get Carl Edwards back on track in his number 99 Ford. Let's take you back to lap 23. Casey Kane in the five, trying to clear Regan Smith in the 78. Squeeze play. Pile up. Keselowski sneaks through. But when it was over, six cars heavily involved. Marcus Ambrose, Kyle Busch, and damage. Also to the 29 of Harvick. I tried all I could to get it stopped. Yeah, I didn't give you enough notice either. I had just glanced over to two and back and it was already gone. I apologize. I should have given you more notice. Smith and Harvick were able to continue with minor damage. The other four cars heavily damaged, but now all back in the race. Mike, this joint is it's crazy. My wife was the best there was at keeping laps at, at racetracks. Even she can miss a lap here every now and then. And you go by so quick, you look up, you heard him say, sorry, I looked up to two and all of a sudden it happened. That's how quickly things can happen at this joint. Well, we know we're not nowhere near the chase, but nobody knows the importance of gaining one spot on a racetrack 
any race than Carl Edwards. Remember, a tie with Tony Stewart last year. Stewart wins the, the tiebreaker by most wins. That was in the chase. Every position is important every week. It, it, a lot of guys, I mean, you look at Jimmy Johnson, five consecutive championships. That's impossible to do because when you lose one, you can't get over it. You don't just flip a switch and put that out of your mind and you don't deal with it anymore. I've seen that happen to Denny Hamlin already. I saw it happen to Carl now. It's hard to put that out of your mind, buddy. So Edwards is in 40th, and his only chance to gain ground at this point in the race is if several of the cars running fail to finish, he'll pick up one point per position. But I think there's a sense of pride of not having a did not finish. Carl Edwards, it's been well over a year since he had a DNF. They had none last year. Yeah, April of 2010 was the last race that Edwards failed to finish. Brad Keselowski leads Matt Kenseth by half a second. 205 laps to go in Bristol. NASCAR on Fox from Bristol, Tennessee. Other 200 laps to go. 11 lead changes, seven different leaders, and only two cautions. The story of the race summed up Brian Vickers. His first run this year has led the most laps. Brad Keselowski dodged problems last week. Both of Roger Penske's cars have led today. And Casey Kane, an early wreck involving six cars. Points leader Greg Biffle, the pole sitter, led the first 41 laps, but has been out of the top spot since. As we welcome back, Mike Joy. Thanks, Chris. The track back in full sun once again. When we went to break, Brad Kozlowski's lead over Matt Kenseth is now just at one second. Jeff Burton third, and this battle for fourth. Clint Boyer trying to hold off Jeff Gordon, who runs in fifth. Let's take an inside look at what's happening in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, brought to you by Sprint. Craig Biffle, fastest lap of the race. Brian Vickers has led the most laps. Get unlimited access with live in-car audio and real-time stats available through the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app on your Android-powered device. Learn more at sprint.com slash speed. Keselowski is closing on series champion Tony Stewart and Kevin Harvick in front of him. Now, earlier, I mistakenly said third here last August actually that three stood for three laps down he went down one lap early and finished the race three laps in arrears told his crew don't bring back whatever we had last year but Stewart sees the leader filling up his mirror Krista Problem. These drivers, they've not had an opportunity to make many pit stops to make their race car better. As mentioned, only two cautions. Some drivers only made three pit stops so far. What are Brad Keselowski and his team saying as he closes in on Stewart? You like swallowing razor blades here, man. It's not going to be easy. Keep working on them. Five back to Matt. Let me tell you what's the most sickening feeling you can have when you've been driving as hard as these guys have and you go by the flag stand and they put cross flags and you say there ain't no way I can keep going at this pace meaning half halfway yeah, yeah. It's, man I'm I don't know if I can make it or not. And, and, and always a little bit concerned when a driver starts wanting to know how much, per, how much, how far do we, have, how many more laps we got to run. Always worries me a little bit. I, I, I stress stamina because it's a huge factor. Racetrack. Now Keselowski's trying to be respectful of Tony Stewart, not use up his car, not use up Stewart's, but look behind Keselowski. That flash of yellow, that second place, Matt Clint Kenseth, and he's closing in. Brad Keselowski in the two, you can see just a little bit of damage on the front of his race car. That was from that very first caution that we had back on lap 23, the big wreck on the front straightaway. And it looks like Kenza has been in the fence. The right side of his car has some damage. And when I watch Tony Stewart sit here and he's racing Brad Keselowski in the two as hard as he is, I have a flashback to Martinsville last year. 
Tony was about to go in that race at Martinsville, and he raced the leader so hard, and I kept thinking, Tony, why don't you let the leader go? Got a caution, got back, uh, got that lap back, and won the race. That's right. Brian Vickers just drove by Dale Jr. on the outside. Let's check with Steve on Jr.'s car. And uh, Dale Jr. has lost the handle a bit, Mike. He was saying, I've got too much rotation from the center off, and I've lost forward bite. You know, it's such a challenge to try to plant that 850 horsepower with the rear wheel spinning. Meanwhile, Keselowski, he's the leader in the number two. He still can't get by Tony Stewart to clear Stewart, put him a lap down. Suddenly, Matt Kenseth is there. Kozlowski's a little bit better in and through the middle, but Tony got that momentum up off the high side of the corner, and he's able to pull him down the straightaway. That, that, that gets so frustrating when you just need to get by this guy. I mean, the guy in second place is right here. Come on, man, give me a break. And they're closing in on slower cars. That'll get even more interesting. Matt? Mike, knowing the pace and feel of this race so far, we could have just one more stop on pit road in about 70 laps. Kenza telling Jimmy Finney, we need to reverse our track bar adjustment. It's made by entry worse, much harder to drive, much freer. No change across the middle. The exit's fine, but that's what we should be looking at for our next stop. The car's good, but not great. And now we're seeing why Tony Stewart fought Keselowski so hard because as Keselowski gets up into these other lap cars, Stewart risks no longer being the first car one lap down and in position to get a free pass. But he, raced, he get a caution. He raced the leader hard, Keselowski, but as soon as, as uh, Brad got by him, when Matt Kenseth got to him, he let him go because not to be gain there. And we're closing in in about 40 to 50 laps. What will be another set of green flag pit stops should we go without a caution? 175 laps left in the Food City 500 of Bristol, Tennessee. Brad Keselowski in command. 